Hello. Hello. And welcome to the vlog. Indeed. And this time we thought we'd do something a bit different. Yeah, we thought we'd answer one of the questions that we always get asked. It's quite a common one. It comes up almost every week. And I assume it's coming from people that are looking at their options as to whether they buy a uh, canal boat, or say canal boat rather than wide beam or narrow. Um, and they're looking at whether they can make an income, support themselves while living on the boat. And so the question is, how do you earn a living or how do you make money living on a canal boat? So we thought we'd answer that question today. Yeah, and it's literally just how we make money. Yeah, I mean, some of the suggestions may not suit everybody, but it's, it is geared towards what we do to support ourselves and make an income. So why did we choose this lifestyle? Why indeed? Wow, uh, probably a number of different reasons, I think, and it all um, combined to make one big decision, but... I think mostly because we were on the run from the law. <laughs> Don't say things like We that. had to get out of town quick. No. We um we both had very stressful jobs. Indeed. Julie was uh, working as a family support worker for the local children's centre and I was a husband and that was really stressful. Stop. Sorry. Let's start that all again. Well just pick up from where you left off. So why did we choose this lifestyle? Well, it was um Probably a combination of a number of different things, wasn't it, really? It was, yeah. Uh, we both had really stressful jobs. Mm -hmm. I worked as a family support worker uh, for a local children's centre. Yeah, and uh, I worked in uh, property sales. You're an estate agent, Mark. <laughs> Nobody likes estate agents. <laughs> estate agents don't like estate agents. <laughs> But you were working really long hours, weren't you? Yep, yeah, maybe 60, maybe 65 hours a week, something like that. Uh, um, and I couldn't see myself doing that till I was uh, 65, well, 70, if you, the current retirement guidelines are anything to go by. Yeah, and also it took over an hour to get to work and an hour to get back, so... Mm. Um, something needed to change. Something that you did definitely needed to change. And both of our children had grown up, They'd gone to university and they'd settled in the areas where the universities were. So they'd moved away? They had moved away. Um, and we were left with a four bed ender terrace yeah. in Gosport, Hampshire. So we decided to sell the house and buy a boat. Yeah, we decided let's just do something really different. We watched quite a number of YouTube channels, didn't we? Yeah, we did. They were sort of the inspiration for the lifestyle that we decided to choose. And also, I suppose, a bit of an inspiration as to why we decided to film our journey. Um, you know, we watched endless cruising the cut, didn't we? Endless cruising the cut. Yeah. Um, and um, it just became the natural thing to do. And also just to film what we were doing. And also, as you'll discover, because we bought a wide beam, there was no wide beam channels out there. So we decided we were going to set that straight. Yeah. So why did we buy a wide beam? Wow. Well, I mean, we did look around. We looked at the pricing of wide beams and narrow boats. And brand new ones were out of our league weren't they what for wide beams or narrow boats well for both new yeah. ones yeah we couldn't afford a new wide beam they were ridiculously priced and we couldn't afford a new narrow boat so we decided to go for a 2012 wide beam we did um so eight years old uh and it has been very very limited or has had limited use yeah it's got a few things wrong with which we are going to be doing over the course of the next yeah. number of years so it's not perfect we'll probably by, do a video on that and what's wrong means. with our boat yeah yeah um but we yeah we decided to buy a wide beam because we wanted to be based in the south nearer to our children yeah and we weren't at the time bothered about cruising the whole of the network no um there's a number of rivers and canals that can keep us busy in the south yes and at the end of the day if we wanted to do the north we would wait till we were blacked we'd be taken out of the water and put into the north yeah. because unfortunately the two systems do not connect they don't no 
So um, we chose to buy a wide bin because it fitted our lifestyle, it fitted uh, our demographic and it fitted um, how we wanted to live on the water. Um, you know, the extra space was wonderful because it meant we could have family over for Christmas and so on. Um, and it just became the obvious choice. And we quickly realised we were going to have to work from the boat. Yes, we did. Are we continuous cruisers? We are continuous cruisers. Which means that we move on average every 7 to 14 days. Yep. Maximum stay in one area is 14 days and then we have to move on. So we've left our mooring at Midgham and we are now on towards our first lock of the day. And the reason why we decided that, we did start off in a marina, didn't we? We did, yeah. We had um, the first year ish in a marina. Well, we paid a year in advance and it was five and a half thousand pounds, which is a lot of money. And we spent, of the first year in the marina, we spent about four months, maybe less than that, actually, maybe only three months in the marina itself. And the rest of it we spent out. And the reason why we spent time out is because we realised that the best place to be on a boat is out on the canal. So we literally decided within about six months of us being in the marina that yeah. we wanted to be continuous cruisers. We wanted to move up and down the network. Um, and we wanted to see new places, new sites. The countryside is beautiful. Especially the um, Wiltshire countryside. Yeah, it's absolutely stunning. So we knew straight away we needed to be out of the marina. And this is morning on the canal. And also with that, the marina was £5,000. It was actually increasing the next year to £9,000. Yeah, so they were going to virtually almost double the price. Um, Which was... Uh, it was definitely out of our league, really, yeah, wasn't it? It is, it's, yeah. I mean, you know, that's as much as a rented house. Well, more, probably. Mm. Um, you know, it's sort of, to me, that just seemed like sort of London prices. I mean, it's probably not in some of the most exclusive places in London, but as you get nearer to London, paying £9,000 for a mooring that pff, didn't offer an awful lot. There was no, well, there was facilities on site, but there was no um, shops or no. Um, cafes. Or, I mean, I'm sort of maybe downplaying it a little bit, but it didn't have some of the facilities that some of the marinas up north have got, where they've got shops, cafes, restaurants. You know, some of them have even got cinemas and still charge less. So, Yeah, and what the marina did offer was water and electric. But we soon realised that with solar panels, we had, we had all the electric, electric, yeah. We had all the sun electricity we needed, so. So that is why we decided to continuously cruise. Indeed. So, do we own a house? And the simple answer to that one is no, no. we don't. Uh, we sold the house uh, and the proceeds of the sale of the house were used to buy the boat outright. So while we don't owe anything on the boat, we don't have any savings um, whatsoever. So, you know, we sold our house to buy the boat and that's what made the move possible. We also um, own a car. It's a 10 year old car and that we own as a necessity, as we'll explain later when we come on to how we make money living on a boat. So how do we earn money as a continuous cruiser? Well, being a continuous cruiser does have some difficulties in the fact that we do not have a base. We are continuously moving around the system. So therefore, it would be really difficult for us to have a land-based job. Yeah, I mean, the original plan, I think, when we first moved onto the boat was that you were going to follow your art which we'll come on to in a minute. And I was just going to go and get a job in a local estate agents mm. um, because that's what I've been doing for the last 24 years. Uh, difficult to imagine. I know I don't look that old. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was just a simple process of me finding a job doing what I knew best. But moving on to the boat sort of changed everything because we decided that actually what's the point in doing that? It's just swapping one stressful job for another stressful job, except with a view of the water. Yeah, and I mean, you'd always written as well as doing your daytime job, didn't you? Yeah, I used to write all the time. 
So we decided we were going to follow our dreams, that yeah. this was the time. We'd made a big decision in moving onto a boat, so now was the time to make a huge career change, really. Yeah, take a gamble. And because it doesn't cost you as much to live on a boat if you're continuously cruising and not in a marina, we wouldn't have to earn as much money to cover our costs. Yeah, think of it like a business that needs to reduce its cost to stay profitable. We were the same. We, we, we couldn't make any more money. We certainly don't make any more money. We make a fraction of what uh, we used yeah, to make. Yeah. But what we have done is we've reduced the cost base as low as we can get it so that we can afford to live on what we make. And in creative jobs, as people know, you know, out there who have got a creative job, it is harder to actually make a decent living out of it, isn't it? And you're talking minimum wage, really. Yeah, or even less than or that. Less, yeah. Damn near impossible, actually. Yeah. Um, unless you persevere, persevere, persevere. And it's strange because if you asked us now, is life any less stressful? Is the truthful answer yes or no? I'd say yes and no in equal measure. Yeah. There's a disadvantage. There's different stresses. Yeah. There's a disadvantage with um, finding your own income rather than being paid by an employer, which is what we were used to. And the disadvantage is, is that you don't always find the income. No. And you have to work long hours. I mean, we tend to work till about midnight, one o'clock in the morning. Mm. Um I'm not so much because I tend to write during the day but Julie will paint until I mean quite often I have to drag her out of her chair at one o'clock in the morning you know pleading with her please it's one o'clock in the morning can we please go to bed because she's still painting and she's still doing her work she's doing her commissions and so on so you do work just as hard it's a myth that you sort of flit about the canals you know um, staring at the scenery and, and dreaming of you know, um, you know, wildlife and birds and, and all the lovely things out there when actually you've got to find money to yeah. be able to keep this life afloat, if you want to excuse the pun. We don't, we don't have any savings, do we? No. As we've already said. So no. we can't cruise up and down um, filming our journeys and living off of our savings. We don't have any. So I suppose what you see is, is the uh, swan at the top but you don't see the feet paddling no. frantically below. It's a good analogy. So when you see our YouTube channel um, and you watch our cruises and we're just cruising about and we're having a lovely time, that is just one day of the week. The rest of the week we are manic. Yeah, manic. Um, working, you know, basically earning an income. So, so it is possible to earn an income from a boat. You need to have a job that will sustain it and it obviously needs to be a job that not necessarily is land based but um, can accommodate you moving from place to place so what do we do I mean we have really good internet yeah we have a little MiFi unit little tiny one we keep saying we're going to upgrade but we never do because no. it always does us proud yeah. you know we don't have any issues with upload download um, and streaming you know TV and getting the internet so so far touch wood <laughs> everything's been fine so I am a wildlife and nature artist. Indeed. Um, I also teach once a month in Chichester. So I have to travel back to Chichester in West Sussex um, where I teach a class down there. Which has been difficult. Which has been really difficult because it's actually been cancelled most of this year because of covid so you talk about finding a regular income when your income's cut off and i know it's not we're not alone because people same with up, everybody. And, up and down the country have had the same thing but um you know when your car class is cancelled and that's your main source of income uh it's difficult yeah so you have to reinvent new things yeah um so then i've done a watercolor school online We'll put links to that in case anybody's interested so in watercolour school. So if anyone's interested, school. if you're interested in a free class, there's also a free class on there as well. Um, so then I've moved everything online as much as I can do. Um, and I run classes on there. And I would also normally do shows around the country. So normally once a month. I would be in some part of the country running a show or exhibition. Hence the need for the car, because we get asked yeah. an awful lot 
as continuous cruisers, does the car not become a burden? Yes, it's mm. a massive burden. A nightmare. Put it this way. Well, we've trekked the entire length of the Kennet and Avon Canal, the entire length of the uh, Thames, and the entire, well, as far as Blissworth is concerned, the length of the Grand Union Canal and back again. So that's me, but what do you do? Well, what don't I do? <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot, really. Um, no, I'm a writer. I'm a freelance writer. I write for a few um, websites, uh, American websites. Um, basically, people say to me, what do you write? And I say, anything that anybody will pay me for. Um, that's the joy of a freelance writer. You don't get to pick and choose your jobs. You take what jobs come along. And as long as they pay you, you write about it. It's as simple as that involves a lot of research, most of it is research, 50% of it. But you do learn an awful lot. I mean, what I know about geothermal HVACs, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Um, but uh, also what I do for enjoyment in writing is I write novels. Um, so I've written three so far, all of them published traditionally. One of them currently is not available on Amazon because I've uh, decided that I'm going to uh, self-publish that one myself. Um, so uh, that will be available probably in the coming months uh, but the other two are still on there still traditionally published and I'll put links to those in the description do we earn money from YouTube uh, do we earn money from YouTube tiny 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 hmm um, we have you'd be shocked yeah you'd how be little. shocked how little I mean from the advertising it's like every advert that pops up when you watch these videos a little advert pops up and it's like 0. 0.0001 pence per advert or something like that I've sort of done the maths and we earn less than a pound a day um, through YouTube which is <clears throat> you know other channels will have far more viewers and far more subscribers and they'll get an awful lot more but even then it's still when you look at the amount of effort that goes into making the videos uh, and this isn't a complaint um, but the, you know if anybody goes into YouTube to make money they're not Don't. yeah they're, they're gonna be seriously um, <laughs> disappointed <laughs> yeah yeah which is a state that I'm familiar with most of my my days <laughs> It's a permanent state of disappointment. <laughs> I wake up, I'm disappointed. <laughs> the um, videos do actually take a long time to do. They do, especially if they're working full time as well. Yeah, I mean, they take a whole day in cruising. Yeah. Because we will be filming the entire cruise. Although, to be fair, we are still cruising from A to B, which is where we needed to get to anyway. But it takes longer because you have to stop and think about camera angles and do that shot again. And, oh, you have to do that audio bit again. And so it does add to the burden of it instead of just gleefully cruising along. I think probably the hardest bit is the editing that takes the time. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I do that. <laughs> it, um, no, actually, filming's better. I have to make your, your average camera work look good. Yeah, you do. You do. That's true. Don't do that. You take all the fun out of it. Um, no, it's an equal process, filming and editing. But editing does take some time, um, trying to put it all together so the camera angles match and the audio matches and all the other bits and pieces. But we do it because we really enjoy it. It's like a hobby for us. Um, and we get some lovely comments from people saying that they've, oh. you know, we've inspired them to do it. Um, and I make no apologies. We get a lot of people who have, we've inspired to buy wide beam boats. Boo! From all the narrow boats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but to be honest with you, um, whether you're buying a wide beam or a narrow boat, I don't really care. It's it's a boat. So if we've inspired someone to buy a boat or to do this or to try this out, then uh, I think it's probably a good thing. And I think that might be the best payback. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you meet people and they say, you're the reason I bought a boat. Yeah, and then you meet really them again nice. and they punch you because they bought a boat and they hated it. <laughs> and it's cost them a fortune. And they got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So. so in answer, do we earn money from YouTube a tiny, tiny bit? No. We do have a Patreon page. We do um, indeed. We've started that up recently. And that is really to help pay for equipment that we need because we need new mics. We we're after some lapel mics. Yeah, this is not a shopping list by the way. <laughs> And we need a drone as well. Yeah, so, people have asked us if we're going to get a drone. Yeah. Have you seen how much drones cost? <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit nervous about flying one of them. Yeah, me too, uh, me too. But they're expensive. So the idea would be to get a drone. It would improve the content of the videos. I think when you see the drone in action, especially on um, other narrowboat bloggers, um, it does make 
for really good footage yeah. so it would be great but you know so you know we we obviously do earn a small amount on patreon but that goes towards paying for equipment for the youtube and for some maintenance on the boat and maintenance on the boat like a new chimney and cowl or cap depending on what you call it yeah. so we'll put a little video of that one in the video so you can see it yeah so what have you got mr weir what have i got yeah well <clears throat> I've got a brand new wow. double skinned chrome chimney or black and chrome chimney with a new cowl or hat that clamps so that it doesn't come off in the wind. Wow. And this has been purchased thanks mostly to our patrons. So that's it. That's yeah. how we make money on a boat. Yeah. And this has all been inspired by multitudes of questions that we get asked about the car and about the jobs we do and about how you make money and just every week we get asked a question something along the lines of are you both retired i obviously don't look old enough to retire <laughs> i can only assume that that question is is aimed at me is it um uh can we rewind grey beard well okay so I've got a grey beard maybe I do look old enough to retire but uh, anyway no we haven't retired and uh, we are still working yeah still working full time but we are loving this and we yeah. are going to continue this for as long as we possibly can absolutely mm -hmm.